and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Ifoma Ojinta. And we begin from Egypt where African leaders have begun a brainstorming session in Aswan, the Arab Republic of Egypt, towards finding Africa-led solutions to the problems confronting the continent for sustainable peace and development. President Muhammad Buhari is leading Nigeria's delegation to the forum, which has as its theme, peace, progress and prosperity. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. It was a befitting welcome for President Muhammad Buhari on arrival at Aswan International Airport on his second official visit to Egypt since coming to power. The president, accompanied by the governors of Adamawa, Edo and Yobe States, was received by a high-powered Egyptian government delegation led by the Minister of Housing, Mustafa Madbouli. Also at the airport were Nigeria's ambassador to Egypt, Minister of Defense, Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, National Security Advisor, Director General of the National Intelligence Agency and other senior government officials. At the Aswan Forum, President Buhari and other African leaders are expected to hold action-oriented discussions on the threats, challenges and opportunities for peace and sustainable development on the African continent. If you look at the priorities he has identified for his administration in Nigeria, number one usually is to secure the country and then followed by to revive the economy and then to fight corruption but usually the first one is security because he says that you can run a country or an institution or an organization that you have not secured before you can manage a country or an organization you must first secure it that's why security is primary to him so why this aswan forum well, Aswan Forum is to discuss peace, security, and development in Africa. And you will see that the continent lacks in all those three areas. African leaders are meeting to brainstorm on how to engender peace, security, and bring development to the continent. It's very germane to the African continent. It's a, it's a kind of brainstorming for collective resolution. So what is President Buhari likely to tell them? He is going to tell them about the need to retain African capacities in Africa. The one that you have our young people daring the Sahara Desert, daring the Mediterranean to emigrate to Europe is not good for the continent. So it's going to talk about irregular migration and the need to keep African capacities in Africa, particularly the youth capacity. And then it's going to talk about reconstruction in areas where you have had conflicts. Participants are expected to come up with a declaration at the end of the forum, first in a series expected to last two days. From Aswan, Egypt, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And reports just reaching us says that the Aswan conference has begun. With immense potential, rich in resources, as well as a riding wave of urbanization, industrialization, as well as economic diversification, Africa's important global economy cannot be glossed over, both as a market as well as an engine of growth. This great promise is, however, under threat as the continent is undermined by a myriad of crises challenges and risks to peace, security and development. The Aswan Forum, initiated by the African Union Chairman and President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, therefore provides the first kind of platform for President Muhammad Buhari, other African leaders and critical stakeholders to take stock of current opportunities and challenges in the continent. This is aimed at developing context-specific and action-oriented recommendations and tools towards enhancing African ownership ownership of the conflict prevention, sustainable peace and development agendas. We are confident that the proceedings of the conference
difference would uh, strengthen the continent toward durable and sustainable peace and security. It is indeed the responsibility of this generation of African leaders, policymakers, and intellectuals to provide the homegrown solutions that the continent so desperately needs to protect present and secure future generations to come. Security is fundamental. Without it, we cannot have any peace. So I think it behoves on all of us in the international community to figure out how we can help countries to address these exogenous security shocks that are independent of Africa, by the way. Some members of the Nigerian delegation to the forum describe it as a thought-provoking conversation on the most serious development challenges, security concerns, as well as opportunities in Africa. A continent that is expected to be the hope of the world in 30 years from now is engulfed in so many uh, conflicts and crises. Instead of keeping agonizing, we have to organize ourselves to ensure that uh, we shouldn't be tied down by the past. We have to look for new ways of creating jobs and uh, infrastructure so that our people will pick their pieces. What do we do as a continent to stabilize the situation on the continent in the various countries and also to prevent the reoccurrence of conflicts? Begin to emphasize development, begin to emphasize progress. So would you describe this forum as very relevant to Nigeria? It's very relevant to every African country and I think if we can have more of this in order to understand our problems, to understand where we are going, to understand how we can mutually assist each country and possibly to become one in terms of progress, development and what have you. During the forum, which will last two days, attention will be focused on silencing the guns in Africa, sustaining peace in practice, advancing meaningful contributions of African women, energy security, as well as advancing Africa's partnership with the world in turbulent times. From Aswan, Egypt, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And back home, the Senate Committee on Defense has enjoined the Nigerian armed forces to sustain the current tempo of operations across the country. The committee, led by its chairman, Aliu Magatakada Wamako, notes it will stem emerging security threats and enhance social economic activities. This was highlighted during the committee's maiden oversight visit to the defense headquarters, Abuja, to review the 2019 budget performance. This legislators will continue to establish an effective framework within which to ensure democratic accountability for elected authorities responsible for managing the security sector as well as for the security sector itself. Now for this year 2019, only 40% of the approved capital budget allocation was released. By the Ninth National Assembly is desirous of supporting the armed forces of Nigeria in ensuring a safe and secure environment necessary for a peaceful and progressive Nigerian nation. Details of the oversight visits were held behind closed door. There is now a new security deployment approach in the conduct of elections in Nigeria. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu disclosed this during an interagency consultative committee meeting on election security in Abuja. Mayor Ogidi reports. It is the last interagency consultative committee meeting on election security for the year 2019. And the INEC chairman, in his animated nature, brings more life to the meeting. From that lighter note to the business of the day. We must never allow thuggery and violence to define our elections. The strength of this promise will be tested on January 25, 2020, as INEC prepares for 28 court ordered elections in 12 states across the country. And there is a new thinking now in the deployment of security personnel in the electoral process. The deployment of security personnel in all future elections should be tied to specific locations and specific activities. As regards uh, Bayelsa election, the suspects, uh, those that we are directly involved, were arrested. About 35 of them again were arrested in Bayelsa, while in Kogi. 
suspects that were arrested for violating the electoral laws, uh, eight in number. INEC and the National Assembly has found a middle ground in the reformation of the electoral process. The Senate Committee on INEC has already shared with the Commission the Electoral Act Amendment Bill for our input. We are excited by some of the new provisions concerning electronic transmission of results. So, for Nigerians who have a more credible election in the year 2023, much of the work will be done by the National Assembly in respect to the amendment of the Electoral Act, which is basically expected to be technology-driven. Mie Ogidi, NTNS. Meanwhile, the focus of the Nigerian government on economic transformation, fueled by property and a responsible fiscal plan, is gathering more endorsements. The New Progressives Movement, a youth-based political party, gave the Buhari administration a thumbs up at its National Executive Committee's meeting. Timothy Yusuf reports. NPM. NPM. The State of the Nation. A review of the 2019 general elections and the off-season Bayelsa and Kogi State's governorship elections, as well as the party's self-evaluation, topped the National Executive Committee's meeting of the new progressive movement. The closure of the nation's borders and financial autonomy granted the third tier of government received particular commendation as sensitive and proactive. One of their successes is the border closure, which is to the advantage of the economy of this country. The second aspect is the issue of tax. And we are pushing to the best of our ability as the leaders of political party to make sure that conduction of local government elections is being supervised and carried out by the INEC, not by state governors. We also appreciate the government for bringing in the direct allocation of grant to local governments. The NPM NEC, however, enjoined concerned authorities to sustain the fight against insurgency and other forms of criminality, as well as the amendment of the nation's electoral act. These efforts, the party believes, will address electoral violence and bring in perpetrators to book. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Women and youth's participation in Nigeria politics is a topic of importance which has been relegated to the background despite the tremendous efforts put forward by governments and non-governmental organizations. This is the submission of the women at the National Dialogue on Women and Youth's Active Roles in Politics. Linda Okorigwe reports. Globally, it has been recognized that inclusivity in political participation is a fundamental aspect of modern democracy, and women and youth have for long been seen to be active politically, economically, and socially. The burning issue now is why is there low percentage of women and youth in politics and leadership? The thing is that we are not fighting to be above board. Just like what we said, we are working side by side with the men. And if we have it, most of this corruption crisis will reduce. This is our uh, mandate. This is what we must achieve as women. And we'll look towards how the women in business, the women in agriculture, the women, uh, the uh, traders, the civil servants, politicians, each and every one of us will come up with something. It's time to move forward and stop apportioning blame. Like I said, government is not the problem. The men are not the problem. I think, uh, like I said, women should learn to appreciate their fellow women and be more serious in pursuing their goal. It is agreed that support from various organizations is needed raising awareness about women's rights issues, lobbying legislation bodies, and women supporting women. In Abuja, Linda Okori Igwe, NTN News. The quest to remove 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years has continued with the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals building capacities of youth corps members in entrepreneurial skills to enable them be self-reliant and employers of labor after their service. Joshua Ojito reports. 
In the next few months, Kenneth and other core members here will join the labor market, but their concern of how they will face that saturated space seems to be over. Now he can go into his intended farming business with confidence as he participates in the entrepreneurial skills training. I'm planning to start up uh, my own uh, farming business. If um, I can be able to assess the, the loan maybe from any government body or maybe if I can get any assistance. When it comes to income, Having different streams of income is what is important. So you can't just rely on one business. It's important to have different places from where you get income. Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, in collaboration with UNESCO, is targeting to empower 1.2 million youth core members on digital skills, among others. And this training is one among several in the orphan. We are to inspire you. We are to encourage you, we are to support you on this relevance of entrepreneurship program. With the focus on developing local talent for global success, Kenneth and his colleagues are hopeful of a promising future after the service year. In Abuja, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Time now to take some commercials. Nationwide continues in a moment. Just stay with us. In the strength, yeah, that comes from the hard knocks that life throws at us. And we Nigerians, we know all about that. Oh, a deadly right. You don't stay down, you get up and fight. Sure, it's about speed, technique, quality of the punches, reach. But the real fight is with myself. It's the power, but it's the speed as well. But I can't carry this heavyweight title by myself. There's always got to be someone in my corner. And that's why I believe in GLOW. We have that same tenacity, that Nigerian fighting spirit that makes us game changers. You have to dig deep to be a world champion. But yeah, we Nigerians, yeah, we know all about that. What a fight! GLOW, a halo. Heavyweight champion of the world. They swore an oath to serve our fatherland and defend the people. They traded their freedom, comfortable homes and mortgaged their lives on the battleground for our unity and peaceful living. These are the great, fearless, loyal and committed Nigerian armed forces who risked their lives courageously to safeguard our borders. But in the line of duty, many never returned. Nigerians, arise, let's celebrate our fallen heroes. Put on the remembrance emblem with pride to support the incapacitated and families of our fallen heroes. It is indeed befitting to honor the memory of the gallant hearts of them men who paid the supreme sacrifice President Muhammad Buhari joins all ministries, parastatals, religious and corporate bodies to donate generously to the Emblem Appeal Lunch. Send your donations to these accounts. Account name, Emblem Appeal Lunch. Account number, 393-200-7526. Ecobank Nigeria PLC. From the creeks of the Niger Delta to the Atlantic Ocean, inland waters and beyond, Activities of some unpatriotic Nigerians and criminals are, however, harming Nigeria and Nigerians. Say no to crude oil theft, pipeline vandalism, and illegal oil refineries. These criminal acts destroy the environment, kill maritime life, destroy the livelihood of farmers, fishermen, and reduce Nigeria's economy by billions of naira. Nigerian Navy patrols are working round the clock to secure Nigeria's maritime integrity. Support the Navy and say no to acts that destroy our collective resources. Stop these criminal acts. Blow the whistle. The long arm of the law will surely catch up with comrades. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Navy. Onward together. My name is Balaunti. I'm the Managing Director of Petroleum Product Marketing Company, a subsidiary of NMPC. There are significant uh, price discrepancy between Nigeria and its neighbors across Africa. There's a discrepancy of between 150 to 250 Naira. That creates an incentive for arbitrage, whereby smuggling triumphed 
by taking petroleum products across the neighbor so that they can be sold at higher price. While the smugglers are making the money, Nigeria is paying for it. And that payment is distorting everything that we do in terms of planning, in terms of our ability to fund, and thereby taking money that is meant for development. The introduction of this operation wide will have a reduction of close to 6 million liters on a daily basis, which if you take an average of 150, translates to a saving of over a billion naira every day. That is the benefit of Operation White, and we have started seeing the great benefit. Here, welcome back. The Anti-Corruption Crusade Network has urged Nigerians to join hands with the federal government to stamp out corruption in the country. National coordinator of the network, Wanabashi Eric Alsin, in a media briefing, commended President Mohamed Buhari's quest on zero tolerance for corruption, which he says has achieved giant strides. We believe that we are at a time where our nation is beginning to get it right. Sanity and patriotism is gradually returning across board. And we can confidently say that Nigeria is winning the fight against corruption. At the heels of the just concluded World Anti-Corruption Day, the group says it will soon release a documentary that captures every achievement made so far by President Mohamed Buhari's administration in the fight against corruption with the EFCC at the forefront. It is on this that we at the Anti-Corruption Crusade Network appeal to President Mohamed Buhari to consider the reappointment of CP Ibrahim Magu as the chairman of the EFCC to continue the good fight. The anti-corruption network also believes more successes will be achieved if the tempo on anti-graft campaign is sustained in every facet of the economy. And the present administration's fight against corruption is yielding positive results. But experts are of the opinion that more needs to be done in the quest to achieve zero tolerance for corruption among public officials. This formed part of issues raised by guests on Good Morning Nigeria while discussing the topic, anti-corruption and sustainable development. Kunle Adeyeye reports. The guests admitted that the federal government's ongoing fight against corruption is yielding the desired result, but entrenching ethical values must be part of the fight to end corruption completely. Prevalence has dropped, but the drop is not yet that dramatic as we would like to see it. Um, we have seen some very encouraging improvements as concerns individual agencies. And overall, we have seen, I think, things that give us distinct hope for the future going forward. Percentage of adult Nigeria that came into contact with public officials increased uh, more than what we have in 2016, which is an indication that uh, more adults in Nigeria are having more interaction with public officials and getting services uh, done, which is a sign of development. They believe the campaign will be more successful if the tempo on anti-graft campaign is sustained in every facet of the Nigerian economy. On the reason why corruption cases are not reported at the right time, the guests believe that the practice has eaten deep into both private and the public sectors. I am not saying that enforcement is wrong. In fact, it is very critical. But how does the media communicate the enforcement? If you communicate it, 20 billion stolen. If you do not follow it down with the cost, I mean, the, 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 the opportunity cost of that something you may have sent wrong signal to average Nigeria. If we can also improve on the rewarding system at the public, uh, for public officials, probably it will also lead to reduction uh, in the debt. They advised the media to do more in assisting government in conveying the right messages in the anti-corruption crusade. In Abuja, Kunle Adeyeye, NTA News. Ruth is ready in Lagos for reports from that axis. Hello, Ruth. 
Hello, Ifoma. Thank you. The last may not have been heard of campaigns and events put together to mark this year's fight against gender-based violence. The latest is coming from the British High Commission in Lagos, where wives of southern state governors were given opportunity to speak out against the harmful practice. Annie Daniels has details. The issue of gender-based violence is one that has left many incapacitated, even leading to loss of lives. In spite of awareness campaigns and lit down laws to curb the inhuman act, the trend has persisted. This is why the British High Commission in Lagos brought together wives of southern state's governors in Nigeria to seek probable ways of tackling the act. Girls should go to school, they must finish school, they should not get married before the age of 18. High rates of intolerance, some outlawed religious and cultural practices we are cited as reasons why gender-based violence has persisted. We should be given equal opportunity, equal right to do things. Women that have either endured a violent act of either rape or sexual assault or know of need to understand that there are organizations available, both governmental and non-governmental, that can assist them. I believe we need a, um, to call for a state of emergency on sexual violence in this um, country. It is expected that with collaborations like this one, the issue of gender-based violence will become a thing of the past and the rights of everybody will be respected. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. The Lagos state government is leading the vanguard in offering employment opportunity to blind graduates, urging other public and private organizations to follow suit. The governor, Babajide Sonwolu, while at the graduation ceremony of the Betsida Home of the Blind in Lagos, explained that the state government will explore various avenues towards uplifting their standard of living. Mary Jane Waisi reports. The atmosphere at the graduation ceremony of the home can only be described as exciting. Families and friends of the home trooped out a mass to support the graduating students. Among those present at the event is the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwolu. More importantly, it's for us to carry the news to other private organizations to see that there is ability in disability. Some of the graduating students express their feelings. Well, I thank God today, uh, um, God has made it for me to, to be graduating into the University of um, um, Lagos State. Despite my uh, uh, disability, I have ability in me. The event featured dance, crowning of Mr. and Ms. Blind Nigeria. To influence life, visually impaired, blind, um, physical challenge. I will serve as a listening ear. I will serve not just as Miss Blind to the sighted ones, but also to the visually impaired ones. We plead to where many Nigerians, individual government, they should do more. As Oliver Twins, we need more of their support. In Lagos, Mary Jane Wese, NTU News. Public participation in governance and making political offices less attractive have been identified as possible ways of curbing corruption in Nigeria. Annie Daniels reports that those were the views of some legal practitioners in Lagos at the launch of a compendium of high-profile corruption cases in Nigeria. The present administration, upon assumption in office, promised to fight corruption, bring to book those found guilty, and recover looted funds. These resource persons here applaud the federal government for leaving nothing to chance to actualize its dream, thereby recording success. They, however, found out cases where public office holders who are standing trial for looting public funds are allowed to retain those funds while those cases go on in courts. And how do you start addressing this? The need for justice reform is important. Some judges are hardening more than 10 cases of these high profile corruption cases. Then you start wondering, with other cases are going to do, how is it going to be possible to dispatch this case within one or two years? If we can extract those resources 
and put them on our roads, put them in our hospitals, put them in our schools, the country will go better. The need for public participation was also brought to the fore as means of carbon grafts, especially at the state and local government levels. When the budget has been signed into law, when the appropriation bill is signed into law, we can take each of the items one by one and find out whether the law has been implemented. These concerned Nigerians pointed out that the compendium is to further call on Nigerians to join hands with the federal government in stamping out corruption in Lagos. Annie Daniels, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Lagos, nationwide continuing former in Abuja. Thank you, Ruth. Nigeria and Brazil have resolved to strengthen bilateral relations in the areas of economic development, defense, and food production. The decision was reached in Abuja at a meeting between the Nigerian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Oyama, and the Brazilian counterpart, Ernesto Arujo. Ado Adamo also was there for NT News. Africa's largest economy and its most populous country, Nigeria, is considered a country of increasing importance in the African region and the global arena. This, coupled with the increasing friendly business environment and high return on investments due to the government policy on ease of doing business, informed the visit by the Brazilian delegation led by the Minister of External Relations, Enastro Arajo, and members of their business community. The visit is also part of a strategy by the Brazilian government to continue action on the African development agenda. We want to have uh, a very strong new uh, engagement with Nigeria on uh, basically three pillars. The pillar of uh, the uh, economy, uh, trade, investment, uh, the uh, defense and security pillar and uh, the pillar of human connection and, and values and all the uh, that this uh, deeper dimension, so to say. We have a lot of similarities. Our governance structure uh, is, uh, is very similar. And um, for such two large economies, um, we really feel that we should be doing uh, a lot more in trade and economic relations between our two countries. Nigeria and Brazil signed $1.1 billion pack on agriculture early this year towards empowering about 10,000 Nigerians on agriculture mechanization. The two countries share a common population of about 200 million people, and the economies are driven by oil and agriculture. In Abuja, Adua de Mualso, NTA News. An approval for the an appeal for the approval of minimum pension for senior citizens that will make increase in wages for workers correspond to increase in pension formed part of the request by the Nigerian Union of Pensioners during the 2019 National Pensioners Day. The celebration coincides with the day Labour is meeting chairman of their state councils on the implementation of the new minimum wage at the state's levels. Emmanuel Anyimiro has the details. This year's celebration pulls into consideration what pensioners regarded as their gains and pains after serving meritoriously. They say non-compliance with the constitutional provision which says that pensions should be reviewed every five years or whenever workers' wages are reviewed is their major concern. They noted that states and local governments do not adhere to this constitutional provision. The increase are from the 2010 review are yet to be paid by many states. While appealing also for the creation of Ministry of Pension and Senior Citizens Affairs to cater for the welfare of pensioners and older people, the need to put pension on first line charge was also advocated. Still on wages, states joint negotiating council chairman are meeting in Abuja to give account on the level of compliance by their state governments with the implementation of the new minimum wage. We don't want any worker to be left behind. We are providing this guide so that uh, we can also play our role effectively as uh, NLC, as workers' organization, uh, to be able to ensure that uh, there is seamless implementation. My state, uh -huh. not in its first coming, as at this hour. I hope is that Kogi State government will implement minimum wage for its workers because the workers of Kogi State are not are not different from workers 
in every part of the country. The meeting hopes to arrive at a timeline for state government yet to begin payment to commence negotiation on the consequential adjustment of the new minimum wage. In Abuja, Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. Let's now join Usman in Sokoto for more reports on Nationwide. Over to you, Usman. Hello, Ifoma, and welcome to Sokoto. In line with the federal government's directives, the Sokoto State Government has inaugurated Ease of Doing Business Committee. The committee's inauguration by the State Deputy Governor, Manir Mohammed Naiya, is to facilitate establishment and growth of businesses in the state. Muhammad Nasser reports. The idea to establish such committee was primarily introduced by the World Bank to ensure countries become more accessible to businesses and to boost the economy. The federal government of Nigeria has, in July 2016, established the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council to remove bureaucratic constraints to doing business in Nigeria and to make the country progressively easier place to start and grow business. In September 2019, the National Economic Council approved that all states should replicate the council's model to ensure reduction on cost, time, and procedures to make the process of doing business in Nigeria simpler and effective. The Sokoto State Government has formed and inaugurated the Ease of Doing Business Committee to be headed by the State Governor, Amin Waziri Tambual. The committee is expected to meet monthly and the report to the executive, State Executive Council on quarterly basis. The committee has the mandate to achieving four main objectives that include ensuring registration and growth of business, permit to give easy access or permission to carry out construction and registration of property among others. This of course will ensure that a lot of uh, investors will find it very easy to, to rush to Sokoto State and invest. With the inauguration of the committee, Sokoto has joined the League of States that have complied with the directives and is expected to become a business hub in Sokoto, Muhammad Nasser, NTA News. The wife of Sokoto State Governor Maria Mairu Amin Waziri Tambwal has rounded off the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence declared by the United Nations with the disbursement of financial assistance to the indigent families. Sheikh Muhammad Dati reports that the grand finale of the rally against gender-based violence took place in Guadabawa local government area of the state. The rally against gender-based violence was organized by Maria Mero Amin Waziri Tambwal Legacy Initiative, the Governor's Wife Fed Project. The aim is to enlighten the populace in Godabao local government area and dangers of gender-based violence and how it could be reported to the appropriate authorities. School children and various women groups converge on the venue of the campaign where a wife of the Sokoto State Governor, Maria Mero Amin Waziri Tambwal, called for concerted efforts to reduce the rate of gender-based violence in Nigeria. The essence of this is to create awareness on rape issues, gender violence, be it boy or girl, man or woman, domestic violence, and human rights. She disbursed the sum of 7 million naira to 700 people, with everyone getting 10,000 naira to enable them to start a business of their own. Wife of Deputy Governor Sokoto State, Hawa Maniru Naiya, that of former Governor Sokoto State, Demila Atahiru Bafara, call on parents to enroll their children into school. Other speakers urge parents to pay attention to the proper upbringing of their children, hence the need for laws that will ensure reduction in gender-based violence, especially raping. Wife of the governor and her entourage had earlier paid homage to the palace of district head of Godaba, where she solicited for traditional rulers' support to educate the rural populace on gender-based violence. Sakoto, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTA News. About 50,000 households in Kebi State have received their bi-monthly stipends of the federal government cash transfer program. Nuratanko Akili reports that the initiative, which is part of the social investment program, is aimed at lifting the beneficiaries out of poverty in the state. 49,316 households were drawn from the six participating local government areas selected from the three senatorial zones in the state. They were paid in arrears for eight, six, four, and two months, respectively, depending on the period of enrollment of the beneficiary. 
This number forms part of the 83,126 SOPA enrolled in Kebbi State for the Federal Government Support Initiative. From what they are receiving, this 10,000 10, naira that they are being paid by monthly, some of them have formed groups, they have started saving and they are doing like adashi. some of them are formed cooperatives and they are able to acquire one or two little assets, some of them are doing some, they have a means of livelihood. Before now, people thought it was just a joke, but by the time people started seeing reality, this money, huge money to the poorest of the poor, they see themselves holding 40,000, 30,000 naira, they were surprised. Further extend the reach and enhance implementation efficiency. Another set of cash transfer facilitators have recently been engaged from the benefited local governments. They are therefore subjected to an orientation exercise to get them fully equipped with the operational standard of the program. In Burning Kebi, Muratan Kwakili, NTA News. That's our contribution from Sokutu back to Ifoma in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Good evening. Thank you, Usman. Now, selflessness, humility, and patriotism are distinct qualities individuals must possess in order to build a progressive nation. These were the words of Ola Subomi Obe, a Nigerian UK based philanthropist who was recently honored with the member of the British Empire Award during a courtesy visit to Nigerians in the Diaspora Commission. Elizabeth Omori reports. Ola Shubomi Iginla Aino, a mother of three, dedicated a life to redefining humanitarian services. Gesture she began here in Nigeria while at OAU. Ola Shubomi continued in the United Kingdom. She has catered to the needs of more than 10,000 people in different areas of life and rehabilitated 800 young people who are out of prison. To use this opportunity to call on the leaders in Nigeria to give me a chance to, to give me the opportunity to, to be able to roll out some blueprints of some of the projects that we are designing currently to see how we can respond to the hills within our young people and the disadvantaged people in Nigeria. The Diaspora Commission is ready to collaborate with you on your vision of helping out the younger ones. We'll also introduce you to the Minister of Youth and Sports because I know that the Ministry will need you to also collaborate with the Ministry with a lot of youth programs that the Ministry is embarking upon. So we'll serve as a bridge, a link between you and your country and to be able to have you, you know, do those selfless things that you want to do back home. In recognition of these outstanding services to humanity in Nigeria, Africa, in a host community, United Kingdom, she's among those honored with a member of the British Empire Award by the Queen of England based on the recommendation of the former British Prime Minister Theresa May. I dedicate this award to the millions of Nigerian youth who are desperate to shake off the clock of poverty and the chains of hopelessness. I recognize that I have not walked this journey alone. I dedicate my MBA to them for it is their struggle that has been my glory. Impressed with these, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabri Erewa, made her the first Diaspora Ambassador of the Commission. We use our future, so we need to do everything possible to build the Nigerian youth because we must, we must, we must encourage our youth to have been done. So, congratulations. I know the MBE is bigger, but the Diaspora Ambassador is also just not so bad. <laughs> The Chief Executive Officer urged Nigerian youths to embrace initiatives capable of transforming lives positively, as exemplified by Ola Shubumi, whose 2015 bag of her project featured in Guinness Book of Records. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. And Mina is standing by in Enugu for more reports from that access. How are you, Mina? Very well, Ifoma. Good afternoon and welcome to Enugu Network Center. As one of the visions of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Borontan, to win the hearts and minds of the people, at the ongoing exercise at Logu Do 1, the Editor Division of the Nigerian Army has taken its free medical outreach program to Akamoye community in a Ziago local government area of Enugu State. The General Officer Commander Editor Division, Enugu, said, 
the civil military cooperation activities are being conducted across its areas of responsibility in the southeast. Chidi Mamadu reports. The outreach which was held at Akomoe Community Civic Center attracted its indigents and neighboring villages. The people were sensitized about their oral hygiene and infectious diseases. The General Officer Commanding 82 Division, Major General Lassisi Adeboye, was seen inspecting the progress of the outreach. He also administered drugs to some of the children and presented medical kits and drugs to some members of the community. Major General Deboe said professional medical personnel will be deployed to the various venues of the exercise. This pre medical outreach exercise is part of civil military cooperation line of activities for the ongoing exercise at Ilogudo 1 to offer humanitarian services to the general public and the host communities. Some members of the community thanked the GOC for the gesture and urged him to do more. It is a wonderful thing. That's why I say it is an epoch-making event. You know, we've not seen such a thing before. So it is great. I'm so glad. It was taking a long time that I received something without shrinking, without paying my money. The exercise will extend to Obimo, Ozoan, a local government area, and Ohum Oba in Nsuka local government area in Enugu, Chidima Madu, NTA News. Ensuring safety in marketplaces, firefighting equipment have been presented to traders of Kenyatta and our four Akunano markets. Chief Fire Officer Enugu State Fire Service, Engineer Okudiri Oha, made the presentation at the sensitization of the traders to avoid fire disaster. Chidi Kurafo tells us more. Chief Fire Officer, Enugu State Fire Service, Engineer Kudre Oha, commended the State Governor, Ifan Uguani, for the funds used in procuring the equipment. Engineer has stressed the need for installation of firefighting equipment in homes and marketplaces to prevent fire disaster. So my advice is for them to make sure that uh, they maintain the fire extinguishers well and equally to procure more to add to the one the state government has do donated to them. Leaders of the market commended the state governor and Enugu State Fire Service for their support to the market. They are here, lecturing us how to quench uh, fire whenever something like that happened in the market. When the incident in Anambra State occurred, he decided not to allow it to occur in any good state before taking action. He is proactive in nature. The market visit featured sensitization of traders on the causes of fire outbreak and demonstrations on how to use the fire extinguishers. It also featured interactive sessions. Kenyatta and Afro Konano markets are among the 23 markets that have benefited from the gesture. In Enugu, Chidi Okrafo, NTN News. And that's the contribution from Enugu Nationwide continues in just after this timeout. Beyond. As Gogi Africa turns 20, we thank you and invite you to join us in the quest for 20 must-visit destinations in partnerships with the largest TV network in Africa, the NTA, Ministry of Information and Culture, Ministry of Transportation, Studio 24, Delta Airlines, Tour Brokers International. You too can still be a partner. Call the numbers on your screen or info at gogiafrica.tv. Gogi Africa, celebrating two decades of heritage, travel and tourism. Nigeria is rich in culture, diversity, style, fashion, and delicacies. The authentic Nigerian food, fashion, and hair fair gives you the opportunity to showcase the best creativity in Nigerian food, fashion, styles, in natural hair, and braids. Don't miss this event. The two-day event is taking place at the prestigious Balmoral Convention Center, Federal Palace Hotel, Amadubelo Way, Victoria Island, Lagos. Time is 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily from 16th to 17th of December 2019. Register now at www.authenticninja.com.ng to book your participation as an exhibitor. For bookings and inquiries, please call 0701-312-2480 or 0812-415-4257 or 0708-006-3188 or 0812-36 one two six eight five you can also send us an email at info at authentic .ng. follow us on instagram facebook and twitter at ninja authentic see you soon
Yes. Get ready to be motivated. The motivator challenge is back. Bigger, better, and bold. Now featuring 30 contestants from five African countries, all grabbing that multi Guinness B vitamin goodness that fuels your greatness. Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, and Ethiopia. Which country will claim the 20,000 US dollar grand prize? Brought to you by multi Guinness. Packed with B vitamins to fuel your greatness. Border. Recently, we've been experiencing massive surge in demand. Our sales per day now is going to be between 15 to 20,000 bucks. We needed to expand all avenues because of the multiplier effect is creating. And the most interesting thing about this closure is that many of my farmers today are farmers we recruited recently and they are young graduates. What the government is doing will lead us right. And I can tell you, if the government sustains this thing, sky will not even be our limit. Governor Simon Lalong says the registration of migrants will create adequate database that will capture non-Nigerian citizens residing in the state for proper security records. The governor was speaking at the flag off of the e-registration center for migrants in Plateau State. Mary Domtur reports. The e-registration is in line with the federal government's directive that all migrants residing in the country be registered with the Nigeria Immigration Service within the amnesty period which elapses on the 12th of January 2020. Governor Lalong said the importance of the exercise should not be overemphasized in cross-border crimes, smuggling and general criminal. He called on migrants living in the state to comply with the directive, reiterating that his government is eager and willing to receive more foreigners and investors that will add value to the economy of the state. This development is in line with the as failure to comply with section 57, subsection 5. <laughs> We are sorry about that. Um, the reported new editorial policy of the Punch newspapers to address President Muhammadu Buhari as Major General in his official title and refer to his government as a regime instead of administration has been perceived as totally curious and utterly incredible. In a statement by Gabriel Shehu, Senior Special Assistant to the President, Media and Publicity, the statement clarifies that Major General Muhammadu Buhari retired for that is his title was indeed a major general but today retired from that position and twi now twice democratically elected president of Nigeria is not the choice of punch newspapers editors and owners that is clear the punch newspaper however is called on to se separate journalism from partisan politics and avoid double standards in coddling some of our past dictators and their open contempt for president Buhari. And next is sports.